everybody. Uh, yes, <laughs> the meeting is recording. Somebody just told me the meeting's being recorded, so that's okay as well. Uh, good morning, everybody, from wherever you are. Lovely day today, and just welcome Pat Byrne, who's going to tell us about the West End. Um, she's been involved in promoting the West End, I should say, for instance, since 1999. As you could hear, Pat, we cover various parts from Annie's Land, Knightswood, <laughs> Barton Road, et cetera, et cetera, bits of, of the West, Jordan Hill, uh, but you know, we're in a, a wide, a wide group, but we're uh, Glasgow West End um, U3A. So, you know, we, 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 we are north and west of the city. But I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. Um, so I will hand over to you and uh, let you begin. Thanks very much. And thanks for inviting me along. I'm glad you've cleared that up about the West End because everybody's got different ideas. What the, <laughs> some people think the West End is like Byers Road and Hill Head, but um, it's a very, very diverse area. So I'm going to start off just telling you a wee bit about how the website started up. And then I'll talk about some of the things that I like most about the West End and then maybe some of the highlights um, that we've um, experienced since 1999. So um, the way back then in 1999, my husband, Jim Byrne, who's a web designer and photographer and musician, he was based at Glasgow Caledonian with his project, Making Connections. And that project was to create access to information for disabled people. And the project won an award. It was an international award, quite prestigious, that called the Global Bannerman Challenge based in Sweden. So he was invited over to Sweden for a big affair with King of Sweden there and whatnot, because 10 people um, were chosen for the, to receive this award. So we decided to make a wee holiday of it. And I went to, and we stayed in Stockholm for a few days. So when we come back, Jim said to me, I've made a wee website about our trip. And of course I was all interested. And, you know, because at that time there weren't really all that many websites and, um, there and then I said to him, why don't we make a, a website about Glasgow's West End? Because I, I, I first, I, I, I should say I'm a blow in. You probably know more about the West End than I do. I come from Oakle Patrick. So I got to know the West End when I came to university, Glasgow University as a mature student in 1978. So quite a long time had passed, but I was, I was pretty passionate about the West End and felt that um, Glasgow was all often promoted, as I thought, it was more about the city, more about the centre, and not so much about the West End, which I still think is a jewel in the crown of Glasgow. So that was a kind of way we came, how it came to be set up. So we went about um, just the two of us, getting a website together and putting up nice photographs, um, talking about interesting areas. And then I started putting up about some local characters, just happened to be some people that I knew. It wasn't set up as a business or anything like that. It was just something that we wanted to do. And <clears throat> Jim was based at Glasgow Caledonian. So when we got the site up, he sent round an email around the university telling people about it. And th the response right from the very start was just quite overwhelming. And we had people getting in touch saying, oh, I would like to do something, would it be possible for um, to be involved? And yeah, we were, we were very happy and open to all these ideas. So one of the people um, who became involved from the very start was Jess Fitzgerald, who lives in the West End. And Jess started Jess's Joint, 
where she updated every week to see what was happening in the West End. So that was that was fantastic. And then um, another woman got in touch, Helen Rose, and she wanted to write about her out walks and places that she went, at, um, hill climbing, because the the website um, it is a lot of it is about the West End, but a lot of the content is just what people in the West End may be interested in. And, and her, actually, um, she still has, she still every month writes for the, her outdoor diary. So that has been a feature on the website for decades now. And um, other people that were brought fantastic content for us was um, Roy Beers. And Roy was a journalist who um, his area was food and drink. So he's very much in the know. And there's still masses of information on the website about you know, new places opening, what was happening. He doesn't write for the website anymore because he's far too busy with his, you know, employed as a, a journalist. And um, the, over, over the course, the website has, has changed because it used to be, we used to be much, much busier. And um, because people didn't have websites, so we, we, at one point we had about 300,000 hits a month. It was phenomenally busy. It's a lot less than that now because people have their own websites and their own social media and things change. Now, one of the things that's changed is we still have a lot of contributors to the website, but they are, they are now bloggers, which we've got all these new words through the internet. And bloggers basically keep a diary online. And so we're a kind of host to, the, to these bloggers. And it's great for me, it's, it's, it, you know, there, I get an awful lot of pleasure out of the website because I love the, the things they send, I find really interesting, and I'm always looking forward to seeing, you know, what they've been up to. Some of them are um, very much about the, the, their own, you know, their own ob obsessions and things that they love. For example, Bob Law, he also writes about um, photography and places he goes. So I've got all these wonderful images and he goes out to different parts, sometimes be about different parks in Glasgow, that sort of thing, and it's, it's really interesting. Sometimes it's much further afield. And this further afield aspect <laughs> is very interesting because I have people, um, bloggers, one woman who is a West Ender, but she lives in France, in Salignac, and she, so she writes a blog about rural France. <laughs> so it's not really, it's not, not very West End, but it's, it's interesting. And quite recently, I've absolutely loved um, the content that I'm being sent by Willie Davidson. And he, um, he writes a, a blog about bus pass ramblings. Because when he got his bus pass, he decided that he was going to have all these jaunts. And he only goes away for the day. So the last one was in, on Inverary and Tarbert. So he, he explains exactly where you get the bus, what time you get the bus, where you get the ferry, and so on. And then talks a bit about the place and also has wonderful photography. So I'm very, very lucky that I have these people um, contributing, the, 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 the bloggers. So there are quite a lot of bloggers on the website. Willie actually has an, another a, a blog on the site about climate change. And then I have a young girl in, in Aberdeen, and she sends me information on, on autism. And people have absolutely found that 
so interesting. So um, she's Frances Francesca Beard. And then um, some local young people come to me sometimes on work placement, come from school, and then I teach them a bit about writing for the internet and, um, you know, they, they put up material. And then quite often they hang about. So I've got a, a, one young woman, Lola Rose, who's now at university, but she's still writing. So that creates a lot of um, content. And I, I put up information myself. And I'm, I'm very, very lucky because a lot of the people that I would be interested in I get to meet um, through the website, and probably the the person that um, when you talk about highlights, like I think I, probably a highlight of my life was getting to know Alistair Gray and the um, writer and the artist who who died in, in twenty nineteen. So um, I'll tell you a wee bit about how I met Alistair and a, a bit of, about him because um, he really was the most fascinating man. So um, he would be, he, the, when I was, um, wrote about Alistair, it was initially in the um, local characters section of the website. Well, that's still what it is. So, um, I go along to quite a lot of writing events and in the year 2000 I went along to the launch of Maggie Graham's um, book Sitting Among the Eskimos and I happened to be sitting beside Alistair Gray. Now I didn't recognise him or anything, you know, you're sitting facing forward and you know you're sort of paying attention to what's happening but um, this man um, he, he, he had a lot of impact on me because, you know, when people ask questions at these events, they're often just very simple questions or they're kind of talking a wee bit about, about themselves and what they think. But he, he struck me immediately. He's very, he was a very hugely exuberant person and he, he, he contributed so much to that event because the questions he was asking were so generous and so aimed at allowing Maggie to, you know, speak more about certain aspects of the book. So I was very, very impressed by him. And then um, a few, it was a few years after that, I, um, I used to get into John Smith's bookshop at the university and the manager there was Paul Curry and I, I often get, still do, but I, I used to I often get people suggesting to me you should have so-and-so on your website and Paul said to me that I should get in touch with Alistair and that he could give me a contact because he was the person that Alistair went walking with so I duly met Alistair. I met him upstairs in the chip, the iconic chip in Ashton Lane, the ubiquitous chip. So I met him upstairs with his wife, Morag. And it, it was just so enjoyable. He, he um, you know, <laughs> we chatted about everything and he didn't so much want to, um, it wasn't so much, me asking him questions, is him asking me questions. And um, you were saying, no, no, what does your father do? And uh, so, and it just was so interested in, in everybody. So that, that, you know, it, I wrote up, I wrote about him and then over the years, um, I would bump into him or I saw him not long before he died actually, which I was very, very happy. And he was still working. He, um, because he never stopped producing the most wonderful books and um, art. So, so at that time he was just finishing off the, he was writing the, um, the Divine Trilogy, 
this um, par purgatory and paradise. Can't remember what the, the third one was. But the other thing with regards to his art and very much related to the West End was that Alistair worked, he worked for many, many years when he didn't have a lot of money um, in the ubiquitous chip and he would paint murals there and they would give him his dinner. But of course, he would come on to become very successful and just a wonderful, wonderful um, creative person. And Colin Beatty, who is an entrepreneur and owns Oren Moore, he got Alistair to paint the ceiling up at the top of Oren Moore in the auditorium. And I'm sure some of you will have, have been there, but if you haven't, then I would absolutely say to you, make a point of going into Oren Moore and asking if you can go upstairs and have a look at in the auditorium because Alistair painted this, it had helpers because it was a huge job and on for months and months, but it's glorious. And I would say that that room is probably, it, it may even be the most beautiful room in the whole of Glasgow, but if you haven't seen it, you must absolutely see it because it is so wonderful. So, so I was, um, it was a thrill for me in meeting Alistair Gray. Over the years, I've written on the website various reviews that um, I, I went to where, where it was Alistair speaking, for example. Um, they have a wonderful event at Glasgow University called Creative Conversations. And it's, it's, it has been running digitally, but another something I'm sure some of you, especially if you're interested in, in books and writing, would absolutely love because um, it takes place over a lunchtime and different writers from all over the world and poets and, you know, people with different genres and they, they have, it's usually like Louise Welsh or Zoe Strachan, another writer, from the creative conversation, from um, creative writing course in the, in the university that hosts it. And it's very, very interesting and it's free and it's in the university chapel. So it's, it's beautiful. And I just think that, the, that these sort of things are very, I know, I know they happen in other places, but to me, they're just so particular to the West End. And of course the universities so beautiful, but just to go along there and wander about, have a walk through the cloisters and then go into creative conversations, spend that hour in the, in the chapel. It's it, it, for free, you know, it's, it's just absolutely wonderful. So I, I love all this, this, these aspects of the West End appeal to me so much. Jim and I were married in the university chapel, so that makes it even more appealing to me. So some of the other people that I've met, you know, the, the, that legacy Alice Degree has left is phenomenal with um, his art and his, his literature. And another person, and I'm sure you will um, agree with me, that it brought so much to the West End, also sadly has died, was David McLennan, who set up in Oren Moore the play, a play, a pie and a pint, and the lunchtime theatre. And I just feel that um, who would have believed that every day, I think, I don't think it's opened on a, a Sunday, or Sunday, but every day at lunchtime, like, <laughs> this room would have been quite a big place, would have been absolutely chock-a-block, every ticket taken for lunchtime theatre. It's just, you know, different um, people having an opportunity to, to write and produce plays. So David McLennan it was another person that impressed me so much when I met him. And the same sort of generosity of spirit as Alistair. Um, 
not wanting to talk about themselves really. In fact, when I met him, um, he was in the bar in Orin Moor, he called his friend Dave Anderson over to join us. So, um, you know, the musician and actor, and it was just all so friendly, but he wanted to tell me, um, oh, you should try and get in touch with this young writer. You know, you should um, talk to this person. Just this generosity and, and encouragement of other people. And, and Alistair was very much like that. One of the people that, he, that Alistair said to me, oh, I think you should um, try and get this person on your website as a local character was, Alan Richardson and Alan's an artist but a very very talented artist he um, was commissioned to do the painting of the Kibble Palace when it was the bicentenary of of, um, of Botan the Botanic Gardens a few years ago very very talented and the road sweeper that you will see in Byers Roads so you can also see him on, in the Hillhead Underground mural because when Alistair Gray did that mural, Alan, Alan Richardson, a young artist, was one of the people that he thought should go there. So it's, there's a lot of, um, all that has been very pleasurable for me. Some of the other people that I featured on the, the local characters and um, are, and, Anita Manning, who's the, you'll see on Bargain Hunt and the, has owns um, Great Western Auctions. But I knew Anita anyway, because Anita was my next door neighbor when I lived in Glasgow Street. So we lived together for many, many years. And I think it's just fascinating that you can walk up Byers Road and rub shoulders with internationally acclaimed people, um, for example, the writer Bernard McLafferty and the artist Avril Payton, just walking around and all the students and all that buzz. I just think it's, a, it's an exciting um, place, place to be. So, um, so the people, I think, as well as the place, pretty much make the West End. And um, more recently, things move on in, in the world of the web very swiftly. So now when I'm interviewing people, well, just like yourselves, at the moment it's on Zoom, but for quite a long time, for about three years, about three years ago, we set up Jim and Pat's West End chat. And that's a podcast that so because people love these podcasts now they've got busy lives but they like to know what's going on and they've got their interests so they can be out driving or doing a bit of gardening or whatever and be listening into podcasts so actually um some of the people who were previously um, on the website anyway i've now had um they're now on podcasts for example anita I went along to see Anita with a great old chin wag not so long ago. And um, some of the other people would be Michael Dale, director of the West End Festival, and Bob McDevitt, who's the programmer for I Write. And oh, recently, um, Brendan McElroy, who is also very involved in the West End Festival. And Brendan's an events organizer with Halo Arts. And he, he was actually the last person I interviewed. And then he told me about events that he was putting on in the West End. So it was fantastic. Just a couple of weeks ago, I went along. I hadn't been anywhere, hadn't heard any live music outside and for, oh my goodness, well, well over a year. But Brendan put on the events at Vinicum Street, um, Street, Street Gala, and also Merklin Street um, Festival 
Mer Merkland, Merkland Street Festival, Festival Day, I think it was called. Anyway, um, it, 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 there's so much happening and so many people making, adding to the pleasure in the West End. I, I love the, um, when the festivals are on, you know, the West End Festival, it, it, it's just, you know, it's, you miss these things so much when, when they're not on. And I, I always loved going to Gibson Street Gala and then we have the Mela. I don't know if any of you have been down there um, when that's on in Kelvin Grove Park, that the um, Asian community's huge celebration is just wonderful. It's so, so colourful. And of course, we love the parks and the parks come into their own when we have these festivals with um, events at the botanics, um, like Bard in, Bard in the Britannics where they have the Shakespeare plays in the park and so on. And then of course the, the festival. So, and then I'm always very, very busy when the I Write is on and when the Glasgow Film Festival is on because um, I, I've never been much of a businesswoman, but the website does bring me a lot of opportunities and a lot of enjoyment. So I'm on a kind of barter. Um, I, I can go to, I could go to every film at the Glasgow Film Festival, of course that's not possible, but in return, I promote these events and I write reviews and quite often get to meet some of the directors or the, or the stars. So, um, that's exciting, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe a bit old to be <laughs> getting so excited about these things, but um, I do find them very, very um, enjoyable. And I really admire people like Michael Dale, the, the festival director, the West End Festival, for working so hard to pull these things together. Just for the sip of my water. So um, I would be very, very busy then and enjoy a lot of the events. We've also, um, over the years, both Jim and I have um, had events on at the festival, both at IRITE and um, at the West End Festival for, for a few years, but I think about 12 years ago and 13 years ago, Jim, Jim's a musician, so we would go to lots of um, events and knew a lot of musicians. So I organised the Folk Blues and Beyond mini festival at the West End Festival for a couple of years. And it, it was great fun, but um, it, it just, there were, was a lot happening anyway, a lot of open mic nights and bands performing in cafes like in Chayovna, um, the, the tea room down in Gibson Street and different places like that. So it was just a matter really of pulling them together, getting in touch with the, the bands and making these um, programmes. That's not, that, you're not making any money. In fact, it costs you money because you would be entering your, um, getting a, a, a feature in the, or, or you know, a listing in the programme. But you got to see, people you enjoyed and it was fun. And then the other thing we did was um, a few years ago, we brought out a book and a CD for G Jim and I combined you know, our interests because I, I went back to Glasgow University and I did the um, MLIT in creative writing. So I don't do a lot of writing. I, I write a lot of reviews, but um, now and again, I'll write a, a short story so we um, created this project called 10 Writers Telling Lies, and we brought out a book and a, C a CD. So, so this is the book, 10 Writers Telling Lies. You may recognize this lady on the front, Gillian Mays, <laughs> West Ender, because um, in the book, there are 10 writers with short stories, and then there are 10 songs. So, it's a book and CD. So 
You can also get it in Hillhead Library or the Mitchell Library. But we had such fantastic fun um, going to different festivals, including, including the West. We had three events at the West End Festival. And um, then we had the event at I Write. So it's, we're lucky that you can um, kind of fit your own interests in with, with the website and what you're doing. And it's a pleasure in, in a way to, some of the work I do, obviously I'm being paid for, I'll, I'll promote um, local shops and businesses and, and restaurants. I, I kind of like to stick with places that I kind of can, would say hand on heart, I would go there, you know, I think this place is fabulous. And like, for example, um, Nancy Smiley's shop, where I would recommend to anyone, they can, they'll always find it, if you're looking for a present for anyone, you'll find it in Nancy Smiley and Stevenson Jewelers, because I love the um, Sheila Fleet jewellery. And, and just other, some of the other businesses, the, I get my specs and curry and quirk, that 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 kind kind of thing, and then um, the the um, the courses is a great place, and I I love the wee shop Janet and John that has all the Scottish arts and arts and crafts. So it's kind quite easy to promote things when you you find them in, enjoyable yourself. Somebody mentioned earlier on. Um, about the Annie's Land Butcher. And I saw that online, that appeal um, by, by Gary, who owns the shop. And funnily enough, um, I only have one grandson, but, and he's 17. But when he was wee, um, I always remember going to the sports day and I, I was running about after him all day because he was playing with his wee pal Gary, who is, Gary, the butcher's wee boy. So they were pals from the wee wee, wee boys. So when I, I saw that, I go into the butcher. Jim doesn't eat, doesn't eat meat, so I don't really buy an awful lot of meat, but I do go into that butcher's and they're very, very nice. And, and they've got lovely, lovely um, produce. So when I saw that, I thought, gosh, I should put up a, um, a feature for Gary. And, and, and it's, you know, I'm happy to do that. I wouldn't charge him anything. Maybe later on, if business starts booming again, we would, we, we, we would um, have a business to business um, approach. But I put up a feature and then I can put that up on, on social media, up on Twitter. So you, you're able to see things that you, you feel you want to support. And then you can really help them, and you know that's it's a nice it's a nice feeling for for me. You know they they appreciate it, and and I'm I'm happy to do to do it. The some of the the local um, I mean there's some fantastic community projects in Glasgow West End. For example, the Woodlands Community Gardens. Um, the children's North North Kelvin Meadow and the children's wood. The, these places I try to keep up to up to date with events and advertise them because they're fabulous and um, they they contribute so much to the to the community. The um, last year we did uh, using Jim's talent um he he wrote a song and um and it was a charity single for the g20 festival and that's just it's not it's not in the west end actually it's it's in, in mary hill but it was really a project for young people to give them something to do to get a place where they could meet kind of keep them off the streets and out of trouble and the woman responsible for that is a West Ender, um, and she's the director of North Kel Kelvin Meadow, Emily Cutts. So Emily and I keep in touch, and 
we um, she's I've all, I've also done a, a podcast with um, Emily, which is so so interesting because she's a psychologist and she's a, so, a very firm believer in how important outdoor the outdoors and being able to have outdoor space is for people's well-being. So she's very enthusiastic um, about about all of that. And we did this um, charity single, which is the best fun. Um, it's called Do You Remember Marseille? So you'll be able to find it on YouTube. And um, we just got in touch with um, lots of different people and said, do you want to contribute? And so we've got all people dancing, um, Basha Palka, who works in Nancy Smiley's, Michaela Foster Marsh, who's a, a, a singer and um, performed at Oden Moor, and some of my family, uh, we great um, great grand nephew, <laughs> um, Jacob, singing in the, along with it and dancing. So all of that is fun for us. So, so some of my highlights are um, sort of self self manufactured if you like and taking advantage of your um of your contacts and their generosity but um some of the i mean you know yourselves that the west end is just full of fantastic places like lovely galleries the Ontarian gallery at the university just fantastic They've, got a, they've just got a, a new um, exhibition just started last week and it's called Lids, Lids Off of Whistler. They, ha they have got Whistler, Whistlers already there, but, you know, I, th I think I'll really try and get to this exhibition because they have, it's a, it's a lovely space and they, you know, you, you don't pay to go into these places, it's just wonderful. And of course, Kelvin Grove, exactly, exactly the same. I, I like uh, I like a day out at Kelvin Grove, and then um, cross over to Mother India's Cafe for a fabulous curry. Or they've got another place now, um, the Bungalow Cafe along um, Turkey Hall Street, where it's just brilliant ice cream. So. It's nice to go to these places and sometimes I get invited to um, when new places are opening or if they have a new menu and then I will go along, sample the menu and then write up a wee bit about how much I enjoyed it, as I always do. I really like the Lansdowne restaurant as well. Kelvin, Kelvin Bridge is one of the parts of the West End that I like, I like best. I, I, we lived around the corner for a long time in Glasgow Street, so it's familiar to me, but it's got such a, it's, it's such a lovely um, part of Great Western Road, you know, with the St Mary's and the big cathedral, and then Webster's that was formerly the Lansdowne Church, and they now have the theatre and restaurant. And that place, if you've not been into Webster's, that's worth a visit too because they've been so careful about their restoration and um, actually took went right back, um, you know, scraped the walls right back, and then they discovered the kind of original um, design and, and they got wallpaper made to replicate what was there um, way, 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 way back. And so these, these, these places are lovely. The Lansdowne is an absolutely beautiful restaurant. And in that area, there's always new things cropping up, but um, they've got some fantastic shops. The um, Blair and Sheridan, the jewellers, oh my God. Um, you know, I just think for young people now, if they're getting married, not just to go in and choose something off a shelf, but they can sit down with the, the jewellery designer and talk about what they would like, or even take in, um, you know, old 
gold and rings and things that have been lying about, nobody wearing them, and get them used and redesigned. So they, that's, a that's a beautiful shop. I like the Glasgow Vintage. I love vintage. Um, I, I, and the Glasgow Vintage shop in Kelvin Bridge. A tip is if you're looking for a cashmere, you can pick up a cashmere from the borders in there for about 15 pounds. <laughs> just, it's, a, it's a great shop. And um, I love Roots and Fruits. Who doesn't love Roots and Fruits? They've got a lovely new baker that unbelievable um, called the, the, the Broken Clock. And the, the cakes in there, you've never seen anything like them. That's in Park Road. And um, the Eusebius, I just absolutely adore that restaurant. And of course, it's in the corner of Gibson Street and Byers Road. It's wonderful, wonderful food. And you, or you can pop in and pick something up to bring home. We had a lasagna the other night out of there. And it's just, um, you know, absolutely delicious. So we we have a um, Sunny and Vito's in Park Road is is great. They've got a new opticians, Mika and me. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but it's a fun way to buy eyewear. And um, I think you're quicker and cheaper, I, I'm, but um, it sounds pretty good, pretty good anyway. And then I love the lanes um, and the, you know, they're all so different. I mean, I think Barrow Road is great. It's got all the buzz, but I really, really love the lanes. And if anyone ever visits me from abroad and we, we go out into Barrow Road, into the West End, I would always take them in, to the different lanes, into the Courses, um, along Cresswell Lane, and then, of course, Ashton Lanes, especially and today. You can't imagine what Ashton Lane will be like today with all the, um, even with the social distancing. Of course, it's got the fabulous chip. Um, I'm very fond of the ubiquitous chip because I, I worked here as a waitress when I was at university. And, you know, you, you get you get very fond of fond of places fond of places. I love um, the the study study night the vintage shop in that's been there for forever, and in um, Ruthven Lane, and they Anna Graham who owns that shop, she absolutely knows what she's doing so much, and they are suppliers to Downtown Abbey. You know they they. Um, have fabulous costume. It's very popular with the students and the, the um, Chinese students are, they love that vintage. So she, she's, she's custom. She, we always, we occasionally we go up to the Barras and we always say hello to Anna because she's got a huge um, shop up there, up there too. So there's so much and new things happening as well. Um, more recently, the down, big, big changes. I mean, we all know about all the changes in the university and all the work that's going on there, the Western Infirmary getting knocked down and then down at, or in, in, into Partick, the Kelvin Hall. And I, I don't know if, you, if you've been in there, but they've got, um, it's a kind of mixture of what's happening in there. They've got all the sports part, and then they've got the, um, the, the brought stuff down there from the Hunterian, so you can see a lot of the collections. And the, but the other thing they've got there is the National Library of Scotland. And they've got this film archive, and they've got film going back about 100 years. So it's fascinating. It's lovely. I've, I've taken my wee grandson there, you know, well, it's not wee now, it's, bit, it's over six feet, but when he was wee, we would go there and love to see all the, the you know, the, the trams and, um, you know, come back in, in history, like old football matches. 
so they, these are, these archives, these, that, that National um, Library of Scotland, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. I, I don't know if enough people um, know about it, but um, I would definitely say that's a place worth going. So um, I don't know what other parts of the... Um, yeah, yeah, the other thing that um, is very enjoyable for me that and enjoy very much about the website is that, um, again, getting back to the content, people um, often send me their, you know, writers and poets often send me um, some of their work and we get masses of short stories and poetry on the on the website, some some of them are just really some of them might just be starting out. Um, one woman, um, Linda Jackson, who's a creative writing tutor, often she'll send me work um, from her students, and um, I read it over um, just in case. I'm not a, a fabulous <laughs> critique of poetry, but I read it over, you know, to kind of check that I think it's it's pretty good, and, but it invariably it is. So there are newcomers, people um, that maybe haven't had their work shown before, but also have some wonderful um, poets' um, work on the website. For example, um, Maggie Gibson, who's a fantastic poet, and she was the Sterling's first macker. And um, more recently, I've had poetry from and he's also on my podcast. In fact, Maggie's on the podcast too, um, Brian Whittingham. And Brian, um, he's a fascinating person. He was a, a, a um, boiler maker on the shipyards. And then um, he's now, you know, lectures and does workshops and poetry and very successful poet. He's the Renfrewshire, the Tannehill maker. He's the first Renfrewshire um, poetry marker. So it's um, it's such a pleasure um, having um, these these people send me their work. Sometimes um, it's quite surprising. A, a couple of years ago, a man got in touch with me, a poet from Pakistan, Rizwan Akhtar, um, is a lecturer at uh, um, Lahore University and um, he got in touch with me to say could I put some of my poetry up on your website <laughs> so so we're going from the the west end um, kind of all over the world and um, so yeah this one sends sends poetry um, quite often so I could be working 24 hours a day actually trying to keep up with um, the, well, just everything that's going on. And um, we're so, I feel we're so lucky. It's been hard for people with the pandemic, but I feel we're so lucky to live in such a, a lovely place and um, so much going on and so many things that are actually free. You know, today is such a lovely day and people can say, oh, well, um, maybe go along and have a stroll in the botanics or go down, you know, to Kelvin Grove. I mean, how beautiful is it just walking along University Avenue and down Kelvin Way and just looking around and beautiful architecture and all that greenery looking up to park, you know, the wonderful architecture. I, I think um, I think we're very lucky and I feel lucky, you know, having the website and um, feeling that I've come from Oak Patrick and I've been kind of now, now I'm pretty much a, a West Ender. So I think I'll I think I'll I'll finish there if that's okay. That's great, Pat. Thank you very much indeed. Loads of loads of stuff about the West End. I just had a wee look at your website there. So it's Glasgow West End website seems to it's, get, it's, get it's um 
It's called Pat's Guide to Glasgow's West End. Pat's Guide, but, but I if got you, it. it's www.glasgowestend.co.uk. But actually, if you type in Glasgow West End, it will it will always come up on the first page of Google. Yeah, yeah I, I got it through. Thank uh, you through Google. Any any questions? Anything that anybody you know wants to ask? Um, you do have to book in these days to go to the museums, but that's okay. It means that they're very quiet. Um, you, you can book in and you have to book in in advance just because of the pandemic. You're talking about Kelvin Grove, etc. Mm -hmm. Um, but it does mean it's a you know it does mean it's 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 good it's a good place to visit um, because there's ironically there's slightly less people there. Um, anybody got any anything they would Peter? No, just uh, just what impact do you think the BBC moving across the river has had? Maybe not quite as many celebrities walking up and down Bar's Road as they used to. Absolutely, absolutely, and also for the pubs because they would have their particular haunts and um you know you would come across I think that, that that's that definitely has an impact although um it always um you know <laughs> you used to if you go into Arden Moor was immediately you would get in at the bar you would have like William McIlvanny and um you know like Duncan McLennan and Dave Allen and Dave Anderson and uh, you know this group of um, creative people and the same in the um, you know I think I think quite a lot of people have been quite loyal like upstairs in the in the chip <laughs> I'm sure there's quite a lot of um, playwrights and <coughs> you know writers up there um, yeah yeah any other comments Sheila you need to unmute No, oh, sorry. I thought you were. I thought you were indicating you were going to ask something there. <laughs> do, do you think if we put our minds to it in the UCA that we could maybe get a blog or become a blogger for? I in would your love site? that. I would love that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've put. I've. Um, there are some things you know. This illuminates. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I put up lots of things for Luminate. In fact, they've invited me to um, read some of my own work at, at, at some of their events. Yeah. So, no, um, I mean, I, I have a um, Baloch open mic, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have quite recently come onto the website. I, that would be, I would be happy to do that, Helen. Right, well, that's a good thing. Yes, we could get our heads together on that one, the writers. Yeah, that would, be, that would be excellent. And I don't, I don't mind, you know, people will say to me, but how often do I have to do it or what? And I say, it's, it's all one to me, you know, if you, you know, if it's, if it's um, like twice a year or um, once a month, it's fine, whatever suits the ideal okay we'll have a think about that pat thanks yeah thank you pat we'll put that, be, be right. that no it's it's good for me you know it's it's interesting in content for the the, the website yeah. Yeah. yeah any other uh, last can I, can I just make a comment yeah Jackie. sorry so I don't know what's happened to my picture you obviously <laughs> got fed up looking at me <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you, but also, as you say, how nice it is to wander around and see people that you recognise from different things. And you said you know Anita Manning. Yes. Uh -huh. And I just wanted to say I was walking down Great Western Road a few weeks ago and saw her and, of course, didn't think and just thought, oh, someone I know. So I just said, oh, hi. How are you? She just gave me such a big grin and said, <laughs> oh, hello. And I just, mm -hmm. afterwards, I thought, oh, what an idiot. <laughs> I, just, I, I do that. It was so lovely and gracious. <laughs> uh, and I, I, do, just... <laughs> I do that too. I, I, um, I used to watch religiously at River City and oh, um, when it started at first. And then um, a couple of times I bumped into, uh, on the street, Scarlet, 
and then I thought I knew her and I was like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, it is disconcerting when that happens. Uh, just time for one, one last comment, questions. So yeah, that was the, anybody got, just I'm on two screens here, so I'm just making sure I've not got anybody waving at me. That's absolutely fine. Well, Pat, thank you very much indeed for taking us through the area of which we live and walk through, as you say, have our being. Uh, it was very informative. And yes, we will have a look at the website and see if um, we can do something. Certainly put yeah. some information about Glasgow West End U3A, that's for sure. Uh, that would be lovely. Yeah, that would be great. And then Anita did speak to us a couple, was she one of our speakers about three yes. years ago? So that was, that was really good, really interesting. Yeah, so thank you so much for well, that. Well, thanks, thanks for inviting me. And I'll be hoping to hear from you soon. Yeah, we will. We will. Okay. Bye. Okay, everybody. Enjoy any any other comments before we leave. Enjoy the sunshine. You too. <laughs> and uh, speak to you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.